It's hot, but it's so good. I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make a tempura battered chicken dish called Toriken. It's a specialty of Oita Prefecture on the island of Kyushu. And I've got a few tricks to share that'll ensure your chicken is juicy and flavorful and your tempura batter fries up nice and crisp. So let's start with a look at our ingredients. For the chicken, I'm using 500 grams of chicken tenders, but breast meat cut into strips will work as well. We're gonna season these with two tablespoons of sake, one teaspoon of grated ginger, and a half teaspoon of salt. For the tempura chicken batter, I'm using a half cup of very cold sparkling water, one large egg, 75 grams of cold cake flour, and 25 grams of potato starch. For the dipping sauce, you can whip up a batch of my tempura sauce for something savory and comforting. Or if you feel like something light and citrusy, ponzu is another fantastic option and I'll include links to both recipes in the video description below. Let's start by preparing the chicken. These tenders are pretty large, so I'm going to cut them in half diagonally into 3 quarter inch strips that are about the same thickness from end to end. If your chicken fingers are small, you may not need to cut them at all, and on the flip side if you're using breast meat, just slice them up into strips. Now I'm going to add the chicken to a bowl, along with the sake, salt, and grated ginger. Then you want to work the ingredients in with your hand. The salt's going to lightly season the chicken while the ginger contains an enzyme called zingibane that's going to tenderize the meat. Ideally, you'll want to let the chicken marinate for at least an hour in the fridge, but if you're in a rush, whatever time you give it is better than nothing. Prepare a cooling rack by lining it with a few sheets of paper towels. When you're ready to fry the chicken, add an inch of vegetable oil to a heavy bottomed pot with high sides and preheat it to 340 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius. After the chicken has had a chance to marinate, use a paper towel to wipe off any excess marinade on the surface of the chicken. This will help the batter cling better to the meat. For the tempura batter, break an egg into a mixing bowl and whisk it until it's uniform in color. Now I'm going to sift in the flour and potato starch. The key to light and crispy tempura batter is to minimize the formation of gluten and we're using three tricks to achieve this. The first is that all the ingredients need to be very cold. The second is the low gluten cake flour mixed with potato starch. And the third trick is that we want to mix the tempura batter as little as possible and sifting it's going to help prevent lumps from forming. Now I'm going to partially mix the flour into the egg. Then I'm going to add our cold sparkling water and stir it in. As soon as you don't see any dry spots remaining and your batter's looking like this, it's ready to go. Okay, our oil is up to temperature, so let's add some of the chicken to the tempura batter and then lower each piece into the oil. The batter is pretty thin, so you'll want to move quickly here so it doesn't all drip off. The reason for the thin batter is that the high water content turns to steam in the oil and it helps the batter to puff up. This creates a lacy crust that's going to make our tempura light and crispy. Now I'm going to fry these for about 3 minutes or until the batter is very crisp. Be sure to flip them over periodically so they cook through evenly. While we wait for that tempura to crisp, I want to take a moment to thank all of you who support this channel through your membership to my secret stash of recipes. If you want in on my kitchen secrets, head over to MarksRecipes.com where you'll find some great side dishes to pair with this tempura chicken, like my rainbow pickles or my celery and Asian pear salad. All right, let's check on our chicken. Okay, our tempura chicken is super crispy and it's just starting to take on a hint of color. So let's get this out of the oil and onto our prepared rack to drain. Beautiful, aren't they? 
Now you can clean the oil with the skimmer and repeat with the remaining chicken. Once I'm done with the chicken, I usually like to fry up something green to give our chicken tempura a pop of color. I'm using some green peppers today, but green beans, shiso, or basil leaves are all great options. To plate up the tempura, I recommend lining your plate with some paper to absorb any excess oil. Then you can stack the chicken tempura up like campfire logs so they have room to breathe. Okay, let's add a piece of that green pepper along with the shiso leaf. And our toriten is ready to eat. All right, let's dig in while it's still crisp. Itadakimasu. All right, I'm gonna go in for a bite with just the tempura chicken here first. Mm. <laughs> Hot. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's ridiculously crispy and it's super juicy in the center. All right, I've got a couple different sauces here. This one's tempura sauce. This one's my ponzu, and I've got links to both of these recipes in the video description down below. Let's try the tempura sauce here. Mm. Because we brined the chicken, it doesn't really need a sauce, but when you dip it in the tempura sauce, it bumps up the umami to 10. All right, another traditional sauce for toritan and oita is to use ponzu. So I've got some here. Mmm. Now that's a totally different experience. You've got that light, refreshing, citrusy flavor with the savory soy sauce. And the tanginess combined with that lacy, crisp tempura batter makes this super light and delicious. I really like the ponzu. Mmm. As you saw, chicken tempura is super easy to make at home and it's ridiculously good, so I hope you'll give it a try. Well, I'm gonna clean up and then walk this chicken off, but check out this playlist for more mouthwatering Japanese fried chicken recipes. And I'll catch you in the next one.